Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. Uh, and thank you for the opportunity to give a brief update on what the OpenID Foundation's Financial Grade API Working Group has been up to and how the FAPI profile is driving open banking around the world. Uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, to present to your conference. My name is Ralph Bragg and I am a Working Group member of the FAPI uh, Working Group and a former editor of the UK Open Banking Security Profile and the former UK Open Banking Ecosystem Trust Framework Architect uh, and Security Standards Editor. I'm sure this has come as absolute no surprise to you, uh, but the OpenID Foundation, in brief, is a non-profit international standards organization specialized in the standardization of the internet identity layer and API access management. Our membership is made up of representatives from all over the world and is growing all the time, particularly as we start embarking on the global rollout of open banking and the connected, uh, the wider connected economy programs. Our membership consists of a huge number of members that most of which will also be members of the FIDO Alliance. But if you don't see your name uh, on this august list of members, as a standards body and as a nonprofit, we'd really like to encourage you all to, uh, to join the foundation, to get involved and contribute to helping to maintain these standards, to maintain these uh, different working groups and to maintain the IPR uh, that is fundamentally for your benefit and your customers' benefits globally. Open ID standards uh, are used everywhere. We, as an introduction, we use Open ID Connect to sign in with Apple, Google sign in, Microsoft sign in, the GSMA, Mobile Connect. And there is a staggering number of tra transactions that are now pushed through using Open ID Connect as both an authentication platform, but also as an extension to OAuth2 as an authorization uh, protocol. When I first started at Open Banking in the UK, we were hunting around for a framework and a standard from which to base everything that we were going to build the new UK national program on. And everywhere we looked was OpenID Connect. OAuth 2 by itself was considered to be too insecure, but the OpenID Connect offered a way, and the OpenID Foundation offered a way for us to use a common, highly secure uh, protocol to then further refine to make sure that it was fit for purpose for the data sharing ecosystems that we were trying to build in the financial services sector in the UK. And now OpenID Financial API is being used as the API access control standard by the UK Open Banking Implementation Program and numerous other standards bodies around the world, all of which require a higher level of API protection. We are but one of the many working groups within the OpenID Foundation. And even though our name is FAPI, it has very, very little to do with financial services. Originally, we started off as needing to solve a specific uh, use case for the, what we thought was unique to finance. And as we evolved and as we had uh, more and more members join, we all came to the realization that the financial element of the uh, working group really applied to any area or any sector that needed to safely share data amongst participants. And so we really are now uh, the financial grade API working group. And we have got members that are uh, consisted or we consist of members that are not just based in finance and the profile and the output of the working group is now being used by other sectors that may have grown organically outside of open banking, but fundamentally are not part of open banking. The financial API working group consists of a number of profiles. When we first started, we thought we would have just two very, very simple security profiles, read only and read write that they were called. And initially, those profiles were going to be aligned against the operations that were being performed by uh, participants. Read only, meaning access to account information, particularly typically used by uh, PFM or personal finance management applications, and read write highly secure uh, capabilities that are on standard that's going to be needed when changing customers' data or instructing payments to be performed using these new rails. But as we evolved and as we developed, we realized that in most situations, the opposite was typically true. Payments are usually protected by numerous different uh, other parts of legislation that protects consumers' uh, payments uh, capabilities or um, money in their bank accounts. And there are other alternatives that offer outside of the actual act of execution that offers consumer redress if something goes wrong with a payment. But 
when you consider data, the thing and the elements uh, that make up a consumer's sort of financial history. So their account transactions, their standing orders, their beneficiary uh, lists. It's actually this information that arguably is more important. And if this information is lost or compromised or stolen, it's far harder to offer customers redress. redress. It's far easier to put money back into a company, a person's or company's uh, bank account if money is stolen or incorrectly instructed to be transfer, uh, transferred. It's far harder to offer consumers support and to make consumers whole if their data is compromised. And so these two profiles of read-only, which was really originally thought of as a profile for accessing and read-only data, and read-write, which was initially considered um, use appropriate for payments, didn't really have that sort of direct correlation. And in fact, we found that it, the opposite was true, that when you're dealing with data and when you're dealing with consumers' most sensitive you know, information about what they spend their money on or how much money they have in the bank, it's actually this information that needs to be protected at, at a higher level. And so we've typically seen the read-write specification being adopted. And so what you now see and what you will now see as of the, this week is that those two profiles, the read-only read and read-write specifications have been renamed the baseline and advanced profile, bringing version one specifications into line with version two. When we first started, we thought it would be uh, reasonably simple to specify a protocol, but it wasn't. There were a whole bunch of necessary but non-existing components in the OAuth 2 world that uh, we needed to create. So what we have started to do is to create the necessary components along our journey. So we've specified MTLS, JARM, uh, or the FAPI client initiation, in client initiated back channel authentication protocol, which is a flavor of the Moderna working groups uh, SIBA protocol in order to support use cases that we never conceived of right at the beginning of the, pro uh, of the process. Just like as an industry along the way with OpenID Connect, we created JWT, JWS, et cetera, et cetera, in order to fill in the missing pieces in order to complete the specification and to create all of the different profiles necessary to provide a secure way for financial services data to be shared between participants. It's a journey, but we're slowly getting there. V1 is in the finalization mode. Um, we have just issued our final call uh, for comments and we're hoping to issue the final implementers draft and move that to a final standard uh, before moving our attention to version two. Where are we globally? So as we said at the start of this presentation, how is this particular profile driving open banking? Well, quite significantly and <laughs> quite globally, this profile and this specification is now being universally uh, adopted by the UK. So originally the UK, like most other um, global standards bodies in the financial services space was using a FAPI derivative. But as of the middle or the middle of 2018, the UK ecosystem has formally moved to adopt FAPI 1 advanced profile. As you can see on the slide, all the other standards bodies around the world that are engaging in connected economy, open banking, um, open finance or open X initiatives have either adopted FAPI outright, i.e. the no changes and the internet using the international specification as written, or small derivations in order to some more support localization uh, of their particular, you know, to address their particular needs. Um, more recently, we've seen open banking come to Latin America. We have got Brazil and Mexico well under uh, underway and both of those uh, markets are actively considering FAPI as the standard in which to uh, implement their open banking ecosystems. Well, specs are nice, but for all real inter interoperability, we need implementations and we need implementations to be tested and to conform and to be certified. So in addition to providing the specifications for open, uh, the OpenID financial grade API uh, authorization authentication protocol, the OpenID Foundation publishes a suite of conformance tests. These suites and these conformance tests were originally uh, sponsored and created by the UK Open Banking Implementation Entity, who subsequently donated all of the intellectual property, the assets, the processes to the OpenID Foundation for the benefit of all consumers and all 
stakeholders that may wish to bring FAPI compliant solutions to market. That includes vendors in the OpenID space, banks and third parties that are looking to um, build new product offerings or to become compliant uh, with their regulatory obligations. And now what we are starting to see is that these test suites and these certification processes be used in anger and by some of the largest banks in the world. So starting again, as you predict um, in the UK, we have got HSBC, Coots, RBS, NatWest, Barclays, TSB, indeed all of the major banks uh, actively going through certification now and all of which should be certified with FAPI by the middle of next year. This is a fantastic stake in the ground that allows these banks to say to their customers and to the world that not only do they offer great you know, APIs, but they do so using a profile that has been formally proven to have no known uh, threats. Uh, and that is a phenomenal position for banks that wish to offer services to, um, to be in. And it's a great thing for the ecosystem in the industry to be able to say that if you implement and have certified these specifications and you've conformed to the standards that have been outlined by the OpenID Financial Grade API Security Working Group, you are actively trying to strive for the most secure, most safe uh, way of sharing your customer's data, which is arguably the most important thing that you or any organization can do in the digital age. And that's pretty much it from uh, me. I'm open to taking any questions and I'm looking forward to them. So thanks very much and uh, watch the space.